Hi guys, welcome to the Beyond Football podcast. This podcast is basically a platform for young professionals like me to share the to share their journeys. So it's where you can see the successes, the struggles whilst being an up and coming baller, as well as just showing you guys who they are beyond football. So today on my first podcast, I got my West Ham teammate. My Nigerian brother, England under 20 international, Aji Elise. So, yeah, Aji, thanks for coming on. It's a pleasure to have you. No worries, bro. So, let's get straight in, man. So, what I want to ask you first is that, so, how did you start playing football? Where did it all begin? Um, from what I can remember, um, just playing wherever. I don't know how like I started loving football, but from a young age, I just always always wanted to play. Um, at school, at home, in the garden, wherever I could, I just try and play. Then like getting it actually into football was more like um, my nan used to take me to a local club when I was like. Yeah. She tells me when I was like four or five. Obviously, I can't remember back then, but mm. she used to take me. She said it was indoors. I used to just play there. Then from there, got scouted by West Ham at like, oh, sorry. So I went to Sunday League at like six or seven. Yeah. Then got scouted by West Ham at eight. And then I've been at West Ham since then. Right. So you got scouted young. Yeah. Yeah, very young. You baller. <laughs> so what? You started around when you were like four or five? Four, four. That's what my family told me, yeah. Wow. Obviously, I can't remember back then, but yeah, that's yeah it makes sense. Makes sense. Well, that that shows why you're that this good now, yeah. <laughs> okay, from those years. So, has it always been a dream for you since you were young? Yeah, yeah. Like you know, when you're in school and people be like, "What you want to do when you're older?" It's always be, "I want to be a professional footballer." Yeah. There was never like, there's never like, "Oh, I want to be a doctor or a lawyer mm. or anything like that." It's always just footballer. Yeah, no, I hear it. That's literally most young boys' dream nowadays. So yeah, exactly. Professional. But that's that's mad because starting at four or five, it clearly shows that obviously since you're playing all those years, getting into scouting early, like you can see by obviously the technique you have. <laughs> Cause compared to me, where I, I was I was playing Sunday league until I was really like 11, 12, and then I got scouted quite later on. Yeah. So, how has it been being in the academy system from that young, like six, seven? Well, I mean, I've always enjoyed it. Like, we've always had good facilities. We've always had loads of kit. It's always been a good experience, but I've never experienced the other side of, like, yeah, yeah, a lower league academy. So <clears throat> I don't really have anything to compare it to, but from what I've experienced, it's, it's, a, it's a good experience, you know? So you've it's, you're been... basically living the dream. <laughs> so you've just been spoiled from young, eh? Yeah, it's true. Hmm. No, that's good, man. So what, do you feel like, because I've heard a lot where they say that guys or boys who've grown up through the academy system, they they really like a lot of them fall out of football or they get released by the ages of like 18 because obviously they can't really hack the the standard and the adaptation. So what do you think about that? I don't know, it's a tough one because I guess if you look at the stats, like a very low percentage of players that start off in academy systems actually make it as professional football being their yeah. main job. But it's like to put a to put my finger on like why, I don't actually know. Do you know mm. what I mean? The thing is, if we check the stats, I feel like the stats is that like, I think it's like three percent. Well, I was gonna say like one percent. So percent. No, I think it might be as low as that. Yeah. So can you imagine that every young boy's dream and only one percent actually make it? Exactly. But I feel like some people say that those guys who obviously gone gone up through the academy system, that some people say that the reason why maybe some of them they fall out of football or get released is because 
they've always been in that bubble. They've always had that lifestyle. They've always had everything done for them. And they haven't really had to work hard compared to someone who maybe comes from like Sunday league, like me who got scouted around like 12, 13, where they're saying those guys who were like scouted from when they were young, they're not as hungry because obviously they've been around it. What do you think? Yeah, true. I, I agree with what you're saying. Like, if you do get scouted early and you're like a Premier League academy, then you're given everything, like the kit. Um, you're going on tour to like all these European countries at the end of the season. You're playing on the nice pitches. Some clubs will even give you boots and stuff, you know? So I guess there is that element where you you haven't had to like, like suffer kind of. You haven't had to like go through a lot to like during your journey. So when you get to like 18, 19 and you don't get off with a pro, like it's unusual because everything's kind of gone your way. You've, yeah. you've always been the best. You've always been one of the best players wherever you've been. Mm. And now that and you've always been treated like a king and now that like you've not been offered a contract, I guess it can be difficult because you're not used to rejection, you know what I mean? Yeah. So what, Whereas you know, on, like, on the, on the yeah, flip side, you, like you. if you're constantly getting rejected, going on trials, people are saying no, you've had to work really, really hard to where you're going. Yeah, if someone says no to you, yeah, if someone says no to you, you just turn around and be like, okay, I'll move on. Like, like what's next? Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I hear it. So what? So those guys who've been throughout the academy system from like ages six to seven, from like below ten, they have to like grow up quickly. Do you think? Mm, I wouldn't say like they have to grow up quickly, but. But I'd say when you get to like, I say it's okay. Let me rephrase that. It's 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 different from other people who are their age. If you get what I mean, they live like the elite lifestyle from a very young age. Yeah, yeah. So from from young age, you're treated very very well at your club. Then as soon as you hit sixteen, you get your scholar. Yeah. As soon as you hit seventeen, a lot of people sign pro, oh, and yeah. and now you're earning. You're earning more than like your parents are at seventeen. Yeah, crazy. Like, it's a it's a crazy situation to be in. So how when that so obviously you coming up through the ranks. Let me just ask. Um, were you always a defender when you first started? When you were like six, seven? When you got scouted, everything? No. So when when I was playing Sunday League at like seven, eight years old, I was a striker. Yeah. But I think I was one of the two my team. Yeah, striker. I used to score so many goals. <laughs> You've seen the way I score in training, bro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can see the I can see it in you. I can see it in you. But yeah, I was I was probably like the tallest in my team, so the coach just put me in defence. Like it wasn't centre back at the time because we played like seven aside. side. Yeah. Put me as like one of two defenders. Then I got scouted by West Ham as a defender. And okay. Then I've always been like I'm not I'm not the tallest. I'm six one, so I've always been taller, but not the tallest. So I've always I just like naturally went into defence and then yeah. I've turned into a centre back through through time. So what? So since that point, you just did you enjoy like being a centre back, defending all of that? Yeah. I, like, or did you honestly, or do you think like, oh no, I just wanna be a striker, I just wanna score goals, man. <laughs> like scoring goals. It's great because like you get the the plaudits at the end. Everyone talks about you, but there's there's something about defending where you stop your opponent from scoring. Mm. That's just it's just a great feeling, and I've grown accustomed to that. And yeah, I love I love defending. Yeah, word man, that's good. I feel like um that's exactly how I feel about goalkeeping as well. Yeah, people say it's the worst position, but I get the thrill from you know saving those shots. Those moments where you're like, the strike was just like, raw, like, how do you say that? That's what really gives me the thrill. That's why I love being a goalkeeper, to be mm. honest. So I get what you mean when you say that. At the end of the day, not everyone can be a striker, so. Yeah. Everyone has their job on the team. <laughs> yeah, I hear it, man. It's good. So it's good. Because obviously now, today, what from what I've seen in training, how you play, it's good that you became a defender. 
I've probably got more chance as a defender than a striker anyway. <laughs> no, yeah. But you see, when you were saying about, um, obviously, when you get to 16, sign your scholar, get to 17, sign your pro, you're earning more than your parents. Like, how was that for you? So going up through the ranks for West Ham, like being at the academy, like how was that experience like, you know, just going up the ranks and just getting closer and closer to obviously you, you're just earning more than your parents, earning more than people your age and that. How was that? Um, yeah, when, so like when you're young, obviously it starts off as like a dream to become a footballer. I'd say up until like under 13, 14, I was never like one of the best in my age group. I was always, you'd get the reviews at the end of the season and they'd always be like, oh, he needs to improve on this, he needs to improve on that. Yeah. Da, da, da. And, and I was never like playing up or anything like that. Mm. But then come like under 14, started playing up. Uh, when I was 15, playing the 18s. When I was 18, when I was first year scholar, I played in the 23s. So I'd probably say about like under 16s, I probably said to myself, like, I've actually got a chance of making a career out of this. Whereas yeah. I'd say before that, when I was younger and they were telling me, oh, he's not good enough to do the, I was kind of like, oh, well, I love playing football and I enjoy it, but I don't know if I'm actually going to be playing where, where I want to be playing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. So yeah. I'd say like under 16 or so, that's probably when I probably thought to myself, yeah, I can, I can make it as a pro. Then yeah. um, obviously, 16, you get scholar. Um, which is which is a good amount of money, because mm, yeah, like your mate your mates are still in school and at college, where so most of them aren't working, so it's a good amount of money to get by and whatnot. Yeah. But then obviously the pro after comes and that's that's bucks. quite a big step. Yeah. Or <laughs> well, not big bucks, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's good enough. Yeah. No. So you see. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so you see, <laughs> so you see when um, you said obviously before the under 16s, like under 30s, 40s, you were like, oh, you don't really know if you're gonna make a career out of it and everything. Were you, did you think to yourself like, oh, was there something in your mind that you thought where, like, you're gonna fall back on if it didn't work out, like, or was it just football? Just straight football, and. I never ever ever thought of like, oh, if I don't make it, I want to do this or do that. I I'd, I'd, I'd sometimes think about it and be like, hang on a sec, if I don't make it as a footballer, like, what am I gonna do? Yeah. And I start thinking, oh, should I, <laughs> should I be like a doctor or a lawyer or mm. anything? I'm just thinking to myself, I, I couldn't see myself doing it. Yeah, it's a myth, isn't it? But yeah, I hear and I was thinking like, yeah, I always think to myself like, could I go back? Could I? do a degree, could I be a lawyer, anything like that? And I just think to myself, I don't think I could. Mm. No, I love, I feel like a lot of footballers, a lot of people I spoke with, that's literally what they say. They're like, nah, it's not mm. for me. And I feel like, I feel like that's especially maybe because of the fact that obviously you've been through that academy system from young. Yeah, yeah. And this was like the time where, and there was a point in time where we were doing day release. So yeah, yeah, I'd, go yeah, to, yeah. I'd go to school on Monday. I'd go to school Tuesday. At lunch, I'd go to training. Mm. Wednesday, I'd have the whole day off of school, just training. Yeah, Thursday yeah. would be the same as Tuesday, half day, and then Friday at school. So I was, so I was like, I was, I was falling behind in school as well. I remember one time. I was Your in day, release was, day release was mad. I was in math class, yeah. And then, was crazy. And then my, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah. So I was in maths, yeah. And then my teacher goes, to, so I was in top set maths. And my teacher goes to me, oh, we're moving you down to second set. Huh? And I'm like, oh, and I, was, I was struggling. That's the thing. I oh, knew I was struggling. Yes. I, I didn't know what was going on half the time in the class because I was missing like two lessons a week out of like four. Hmm. And he goes, oh, we're going to move you down to second set. It'll be more your level. You're missing too many lessons. And I was like, no, 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 I think I can cope. But I could not cope at all. Yeah. And your name got moving down. So, yeah, at that point in time, if you said to me, oh, would you go to uni or 
do any of these like nine to five jobs, I would I could no never chance. see myself doing it. No chance. But so what? Do you feel like it's um? Do you feel like West Ham maybe didn't do enough to obviously facilitate that? Like with the days you're missing and catching up with the work and everything, or your teachers. Because obviously, with my experience, when I was at um, when I was at Chelsea, when we had day with these, we had like a specific time where we'd have to do education where they had tutors and we had to do education before we got our train. So our teachers would have to send us day release work. So you have to make sure we were not falling behind and everything. And I feel like that that helped me to be honest with my GCSEs and that. Um when we were in day release, we'd get like we were meant to get work from school. Yeah. But they'd give us like a an hour slot to do the the work on a Wednesday afternoon so, so the, what we missed on Tuesdays and Thursdays we never had time to catch up oh, but on okay. Wednesdays we missed the whole day of school we got given an hour slot but you know you turn up like five minutes late yeah <laughs> on a, on a bob one <laughs> you turn up like five minutes late so that's that's like 55 minutes left then you take your time and sit it down and that that <laughs> takes up time then you start doing the work and then you start chatting to someone because it's like there's like yeah. 10 of us 10 of us who've just been right. out training <laughs> nah, but true say, true say, edu education on day release is just a myth because everyone on the team is just like just just not on it. So it's, it's, it's hard have, like, to just you know concentrate and get your head down. To be honest, yeah. If you have like maths and work, and you don't know what you're doing, the teacher that's there was an ICT teacher. Oh, stress. So, so, so he doesn't know anything about math. Mm. So if, so if you don't know what you're doing, then you just can't do anything. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's techie still. Especially, you know, as footballers, obviously day release. You have to be, if you obviously, if you want to succeed in education, you have to be able to, like, learn yourself. So in that sense, you have to be able to, like, be independent, be proactive and just be able to teach yourself stuff because you can't rely on those teachers and that because they just yeah. get along. If you can't learn by yourself, then there's it's no point trying in, in a classroom of 10 guys that yeah. you want to talk about football. <laughs> Word, man. And I've seen that. I've seen that with so many people. <laughs> a lot of my team, teammates. That's what's happened. But anyways, speaking of, so we've gone through the academy system from ages six. Signed your scholar, signed your pro at 17. Now you're getting the England call up. So how did it feel when you got that England call up? The first one, the first one was uh, on the fifteenth. When I was, yeah. So I remember. I remember actually. I was at my old school, Emerson Park, and uh, I found out through the PE teacher. Oh wow! He comes up to me and he's like, "Oh, because this was at like end of year nine, and I was I left at the end of year nine. So hmm. he's like, "Oh." We've got an email from England um, or from West Ham, I can't remember, saying you've been called up. And like, I was like, what? Like, <laughs> like, I, like I, knew, I knew I was doing all right at like whatever level I was playing, 14s or 15s at the time, but I didn't think I was going to get like a, an yeah. England call up or anything like that. Like, you're like raw, like best in the country. Yeah, it was only a training camp at first, but I was thinking, this is crazy. Like, I didn't think I was. I didn't think I was like highly rated like that, or I was thought of like that like, at all. Mm. No, I hear it. Like when my first England call up, it was literally. I checked my my dad sent me the email after school. I was like, "What?" No, I was gassed, man. I was gassed. Cause no, the the whole experience is different, man. When you go to a camp, it's like you you want to return. You always want to go back because. The yeah. quality, the standards, the everything that they have there is, is just crazy. So what was your first age group? How, 16. Pardon? What was your first age group? 16? No, under 15s. 15. Yeah. Back in under 15 days. <laughs> but it was like a long time ago, didn't it? The thing is, it's like what, four or five years ago. Almost four yeah. or five years ago now. Yeah, that's I mean, crazy. Now, I think. Yeah, that's crazy. So, how's it been? You know, 
growing up through those age groups, getting all those England caps? Uh, if I have to describe it, I'd say like it's it's, a, it's an honour, obviously. Yeah. But but yeah, yeah. I'll just say it's, it's an honour. Like sometimes, sometimes you're expecting a, a call up, not to not to be to say, try and say it in the most humble way. Sometimes you'd expect yeah. a call up, but when you get it, you're like, All right, mm-hmm. I'm called up again. Mm-hmm. Like, like I'm doing well. It just it's a bit of like. It gives a bit of satisfaction, really. Even though in the grand scheme of things, whether you play for England or not, means nothing. Yeah, it's at true. the end of the day, but it just makes you feel good about yourself. It makes you think, oh, I'm I'm doing things right. Like I'm on yeah. a good I'm on a good path here. I hear it, because I feel like they also emphasise that in the email. Because in the email they sent, they're like, oh, they're always like, well, you should be really proud because only like you're part of the the top like 50 best in the country, your age group. So. When you're reading that, you're just like, wow, like, I've actually done yeah. well. My hard work is paying off, this and that. So, yeah, it's good, man. But So, being at those, you know, you're, you've been at the under-17 Euros, played for the under-19s, under-20s. Was there, like, a point where you're like, where, like, those experiences, you were like, oh, wow, like, I've made it, like, or anything? I've those are... There's a <laughs> or where you were like raw, like this is big, like I'm actually doing okay, okay. Um, the the seventeen euros was was amazing. Like so, so that was after my first year scholar season, and I didn't actually play that many games that season because I got an ankle injury uh, in August. Came yeah. back in January. And then from like January to April when the um, tournament started, I probably played like eight, nine games mm-hmm. because I was going to, I was going to like training camps with England and then coming back and then picking up injuries and coming back a few weeks later. So I probably played like seven or eight games from January to April. And then when I got there, I wasn't in the squad. Well, I wasn't in the starting 11. I was yeah. on the bench for the first two games. And the two centre-halves that started were like playing very well. So I was like, Obviously, it's an honour to be here. That like, I'm very grateful, but am I am I going to go through the whole tournament and not play, not play at all? Oh yeah, sticky. So then, so we won the first two games. So the last group game, the the manager put me in, and I was mm. like, all right, this might be the the only game I play because we're basically already through. We won the first two games. He's going to play me in this game. Then the two centre backs that played the first games are going to go back in. Yeah. So we played Switzerland. Like looking back at the game. Like I have fond memories of it because I, I felt like I played well. You know when you know when you yeah. think you play well, you, you just nah, do the the game. <laughs> like we we lost one nil, but me personally, having not played the first two games, having not played a lot that season, I was like, I was happy to get through the whole match, no injuries. Yeah, but I felt like I'd I felt like I'd done well myself, and we were through to the next round, yeah. even though we lost. So then, uh. So then, yeah. So then we had the the, the quarterfinals against Norway, and then we're in the meeting, and the manager puts me in the team. Come I'm on. Like, okay then. Come on. I'm like, all right. I must have done quite well in in that last group game. Yeah. So we play, and I'm still thinking, oh okay. So Norway were quite a direct team, so I guess he wanted me in, in the team for my height, winning headers, blah blah blah. Mm. So I, I, I was still thinking to myself, okay. So after so we won two 0 and I'm still thinking to myself after the game, all right, um, he's gonna put the other two centre backs back in. Yeah. But then it turns out one of the centre backs got a, his second yellow card in the in that quarter final, so he couldn't play in the semi final. Yeah. So Stress. then in the space of like in the space of like <laughs> a week, I've gone from thinking I'm not gonna touch the pitch to I'm starting in the semi finals of the Euros. So the semis were against um, Holland, and I can't remember what stadium it was at. Maybe like Rotherham Stadium. Mm-hmm. And so the so the the tournament was based in England, which was amazing because yeah, look, we're England the seventeen. Yeah, that's hard. That's hard. So you got so all the fans, basically like ninety percent of the fans in the stadium, just cheering you on. Yeah, it's crazy. Like the, the games on ITV four. 
so many fans there. It's like it's like late April, early May. So the sun's coming out, pitch is lovely. Oh, everything's just amazing. Living so obviously, dream. so I'd say that was like the point that I'd look at it. I'd look back to it and be like, that was that was an amazing, amazing moment that I, I think back to. It. We we lost that game against um, Netherlands on penalties. Yeah, I think I remember. I think I remember watching that on. I was watching you guys on ITV. Man, it was good. It was good to watch. Yeah, neither team really like was the better team, but when it goes to penalties, you know anything can happen. Yeah, penalties, man. <laughs> Uh, so what? So obviously going through the academy system from six, from the age of six, has there been like a point where you've maybe struggled, maybe you weren't performing and you struggled that like, mentally and you've had like struggles or setbacks, like injuries or anything like has there has there been stuff like that? Um when I was younger, like I said, I was never like the best player in my age group. I was always getting the reviews and they were saying, I think they used to do a starring system, so it was like out of five. Yeah. And I used to always get like two or something like that. Um, I remember when we used to play four quarters at like under 12. You know how the games were split? Yeah, four yeah, quarters? yeah. 420 I'd always, minutes. Yeah, four. yeah. I'd always, yeah. I'd always play two quarters and that was it every single week, just two quarters. All right. And most other players are playing like three or four. Do you know what I mean? mm, mm, mm. So it was like it was like I was a good player and they wanted me there, but I wasn't like the best. I wasn't like yeah. the pick of the bunch. Do you know what I mean? So I wouldn't say I like struggled. I wouldn't say I struggled mentally or anything like that. But that was a point where I wasn't I wasn't doing my best. So I wasn't at my best. And then uh, going on to injuries. Yeah, I've had too many injuries, man. So. Yeah. Injuries are the worst, man. The worst. So how how's your how's been like how has been your experience with those? With injuries. Yeah, with injuries. Um so I've I've done my syndesmosis, my right ankle, I've done my I've torn my quad, my right quad, um I've had an O C D in my right knee. Flip. I've done my right MCL. But it's not bad, just like... Yeah, when I, done, when I done mine as well. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember doing profile <laughs> with... NMC. Nah, NMC, yeah. NMC. Nah, yeah, those so, are funny times. But, but the one thing I would say about injuries right, is that when you have them, when you then start going back on the pitch and training, it makes you enjoy playing more. Yeah. It makes you appreciate it. Like exactly. when you're back on the pitch, you're like, raw. Like, I'm exactly. actually, like, you're, you deep. Like, it makes you think about that dream that obviously you had. You're like, raw. Like, I'm actually getting paid to play on a daily yeah. basis. That's when, when you're back from injury, especially when you're in the gym every day. When you're injured, you're doing uppers, lowers, uppers, lowers. Like six days a week, no rest. It's, long. it's head loss, man. Yeah. So. So I just came back from a quad injury like a month ago and just doing like boxes and like passing outside. I was like, goodness me, I've missed this so much. Yeah, just, I was so happy to be back on the pitch. Trust, man. No. <sighs> Injury's just been tough, man. Especially, I just know, it's just been, especially with my injury, I feel like, because obviously with my first injury, the M, you know the M, MCL, the timing of it, everything, yeah. that one was head mm -hmm. But looking back on it, I feel like it, it helped me grow. It helped me develop in different ways. That it will build me, and I came back better, stronger. So I feel like even I'm not saying that injuries are good, but sometimes you can you can learn from it, you can develop from them. Yeah, another thing I'd say about injuries is that like. Let's say you're you're not the strongest, or you don't have the strongest upper body, or your legs can get bigger. Like mm -hmm. it gives an opportunity for you to be in the gym and just focus on gym and make improvements in your strength or whatnot. And even like outside of um, the gym and football, if there's something that you wanted to do at home that you haven't had time for, it it allows a bit more free time where you're not thinking about 
training the next day or a match on the weekend where yeah. you can like go and do something or focus on something else no matter yeah. what it do. And injuries as well, it, it gives you that point where like you're injured, you're like raw, you like, can't really play football, so what else can I do? Like you. So it's it's like an eye opener for you, like thinking that like, raw, like I was playing training every day. That's what I was doing. Like, what else can I do with myself? You understand? So I feel like for me personally, obviously, when I got done my M- MCO, I was still doing A levels psychology, and I feel like that kind of helped me get through it because it was something that when I got home, I was just concentrating on you know catching up with work, revising, making sure I was doing well in that. And that like yeah. gave me the balance between it, so that I wouldn't like be too concentrated on the football side of it. I feel yeah. like that really helps. Because at the end of the day, like we're gonna stop playing football one day. Exactly. So you gotta have something like that you enjoy. You can't just be, oh yeah, I do football. I love football because like you're gonna stop playing one day, and you need to have stuff outside of that that you enjoy, that you like to do, that you can use to uh, during your spare time. Exactly. So that that's exactly what I want to come on to say. Like, who who are you beyond football? Because that's the issue, the aim of this. Who are you beyond football? I don't have to look at <laughs> that. You'll have to meet me and speak to me in person to figure that out yourself. But I'd say like I'm a I'm a calm person, um, respectful. Sorry, my battery's, battery's going low. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a very calm person, not too outspoken. Just, just yeah. What, so so what do you like to do outside of football? Outside of football, I like to eat food. I like to sleep. <laughs> I like to eat a lot of food. Mm. I like to sleep a lot. Um, sometimes I like watching football. I like watching sometimes. a bit of basketball. Yeah, sometimes, <laughs> not all the time. I hear it, I hear it's, it's, my, it's my job at the end of the day, so I don't like... Sometimes I get bored watching... Yeah, no, watching I hear basketball. it. I literally hear that, man. Um, I like watching basketball. Starting to become a big fan of basketball. Hmm. Um, you support? Sometimes I like to, What's your favorite? Uh, Bro- uh, Brooklyn Nets. Okay. So yeah, I like to sometimes cook, which obviously goes hand in hand with eating. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. So what? So education wise, obviously. So Aji, you guys is the one who, like really inspired me to obviously do the university course with UEL because he was obviously going to do it. So you're you're currently doing it as well, right? The yeah. sports science. Yeah, so I'm currently doing a sport, fitness and coaching course with, um, or degree with Open Uni. So yeah, we just learn about basically sport, fitness and coaching, how it links into sports and everyday life children, everything. Hmm. A, lot, a lot that goes how, into it. How have you found that, like, the balance between that, like, football and education? Well, I'm doing the course part-time because I thought full-time would be too much alongside football. But mm-hmm. when I started the course, I got injured. So I had a lot of free time. So it kind of, like, worked hand-in-hand hand that the free time that I now had, I could spend doing uni work. Yeah, that's true. So, so it hasn't been too bad, but now that I'm back to playing, it can be can be a bit of a struggle at times because like I'm traveling or I'm training and I'm tired, and then I'm thinking, oh, well, I still need to do some reading or I've got an assignment that I need to write. But yeah. at the end of the day, I still if I if I if I time it right and I schedule it right, this I'm still able to do it without too much problem. Yeah, that's good, man. So that's why I'm trying to trying to push obviously with this beyond football. Uh, obviously, it's possible to obviously balance both and be successful in both. So, what have you have you enjoyed it? Uh, just the balance between it. Yeah, yeah. I, I I would say I have 
like so last year when I was on loan I was in a flat by myself I would get back from training at like two o'clock mm. late and then I'd go to bed at like 11 half 11 and honestly I couldn't tell you what I did in between that time I will just sometimes nap wake up <laughs> and, there's literally nothing so what? there's literally nothing else to do in it yeah no, it's true. sometimes I'd, I'd get back I'd eat I'd nap wake up <laughs> Eat, eat again, watch some TV, <laughs> and then go to bed. And I did that for six months straight. No, it's and crazy I, I so much... because a lot of people don't think that we have, we don't have, we don't have any free time like that. That we're just like always training. We got bare time, bro. Don't say that too loud, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we, we don't have, we don't have that much time, but we have we have quite a lot compared to like what what people think. Yeah. So that situation I was in last year, I had too much free time. I had nothing to fill it. Because in, in like academy football, sometimes they'll have like meetings that like half free or you have education if you're still a scholar. But being on loan, there, it was literally, you come in, you train, then you go home. Everything's done by one o'clock. So I was getting home one one thirty, two o'clock. I just had nothing to do. Yeah, word. It's it's mad. <laughs> no, it's crazy. But it's been nice hearing about your journey, man. Like I literally didn't know most of these stuff that you've been telling me. But you see, obviously you've been through that system, you've gone up, you've got your scholar, got your pro prayed for England. Is there is there been a point where you're just like, I'm tired of this, man? That like, Football's not for me. Like, <laughs> like I just, I'm just tired of it. I can't, I, I just can't be asked. No, not yet. I think the day, the day that happens, I'll, I'll retire. You know. Yeah, I hear it. Obviously, there's, there's, there's times where I'm like, oh, this is hard. Like, I'm struggling, or I'm not, I'm not where I think I should be, or I want to be further on from where I am, but. There's never been a time where I've said to myself, "I want to quit playing football because, because I love I love playing football." Yeah. There are other stuff that go that go with it that I don't that I don't enjoy as much, like coming home from long away trips late at night, Plus. not being able to always go out and do stuff you want to do. Yeah, but but I love playing football. I love, but, but yeah, I've never never thought never thought of quitting. Not yet, anyway. Yeah, no, that's good, man. That's what we like. That's what we like. No, it's been great having you, Aji, man. Thanks for coming and speaking to me. I hope, obviously, no worries, it's helped people, just show people a little bit of the behind the scenes of what we footballers go through. Because a lot of people just think, you know, play for England, play for, you know, West Ham, get your professional, like, it's all rosy. It's all <laughs> fun and games you get. But it's really not like that. So that's obviously what I'm trying to show. But <laughs> one thing I forgot to mention is that you made your West Ham debut as well. So how was yeah. that? Yeah, that was that was amazing. Like obviously when you're going through the academy, the 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 aim is to play for West Ham. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So, so to to be called up to the first team and make my debut was just amazing. I I remember saying in in the interview afterwards like, now I can always say I've played for West Ham. Yeah, I know. No matter. Not many <laughs> it people. Sounds a bit cheesy, yeah, but yeah, sounds a bit cheesy. But no matter what happens in my career or what I do after football, or whatever, I can always say I played for West Ham, which which is an amazing thing to say. So yeah, I'm, it is. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be in that position. Nah, I'd love to see it, man. It's just obviously just the beginnings of your career. We're still pushing, we're still pushing. Obviously, one day, hopefully, top five leagues, Premier League. Hopefully, bro. <laughs> nah, it's good to have you, man. All right. All right, brother. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for coming on, man. See you guys next time on the Beyond Podcast, Beyond Football Podcast. We are...